Greetings fellow YouTubers, Claire here. Welcome to my new series, Geodesy. Each Saturday, I'll be uploading a video about some aspect of geology or geologic history that is of interest to me, and hopefully it will be of interest to you. Sometimes I will be doing a straight science video. Sometimes I'll be addressing some of the idiocy I see from young earth creationists. In any case, grab yourself a beverage of choice and let's get started. Today we're going to be talking about the Mycenaean Salinity Crisis. And I know what you're thinking. What in the wide world of sports is Mycenaean? That's merely a geologic term for the last stage of the Miocene Epoch and that's about 7.2 to about 5.2 million years ago. It's named for Messina, Sicily, where there is a particularly outstanding outcrop of rocks of that age. Second question, what is a salinity crisis? Well, that refers to a geologic event of great significance in the Mediterranean Sea, or as my German friends would say, the Mittelmeer. But before we actually talk about the salinity crisis, perhaps we should highlight a simple fact about the geography of the Mediterranean Sea. The Mediterranean is a restricted basin with limited flow of water into the system and a very high evaporation rate. Therefore, the water is much more saline than the Atlantic Ocean. At the narrow strait at Gibraltar, Atlantic waters are carried by a near surface current into the Mediterranean and below that cooler more saline waters are carried out of the Mediterranean and back into the Atlantic. Massive deposits of evaporites like gypsum and salt are found throughout the Mediterranean basin and these sources have been mined by humans for thousands of years. It was suspected that thick sequences of evaporites also occurred beneath the Mediterranean Sea, and as early as 1951 it was suggested that the entire sea had once dried up. During the 1960s, the research vessel Glomar Challenger, with its extensive drilling project throughout the Mediterranean, demonstrated that in fact the Mediterranean is underlain by the thick sequences of evaporites. And the surprise here wasn't that the evaporites were present, the shock was the sheer volume of the evaporites. The drill rig on Glomar Challenger simply could not reach the base of the thick sequence of evaporites beneath the Mediterranean. Later seismic surveys, however, revealed that in the western Mediterranean, the thickness of evaporites was as much as 1,500 meters, and in the eastern Mediterranean, an astonishing 3,500 meters. At about the same time, the Glomar Challenger was sailing the world's oceans and making many remarkable discoveries. Soviet engineers designing the High Aswan Dam in Egypt also made a remarkable discovery. In drilling down to find bedrock, they discovered much to the surprise that there was a deeply entrenched channel buried beneath the Nile muds. It stretched almost 200 meters below present sea level. At some time in the past, over 800 kilometers south of the present Mediterranean Sea, the Nile had carved a deep chasm and had flowed at a level much lower than today's sea level. Over the decades since the 1960s, geophysical research studies have revealed that many rivers flowing into the Mediterranean have similar entrenched channels buried beneath them. Research has also revealed that beneath the Mediterranean Sea itself in many areas, are the preserved paleo channels of an extensive drainage system. And so there's great evidence to support the idea that sometime in the past sea level in the Mediterranean was far lower than today and quite likely at some point the entire sea was either partially or completely desiccated. How could such an event have occurred? Well let's look at the entire geologic history of the Mediterranean. Let's go back a bit farther than we've gone so far in geologic history to a time when there was no Mediterranean. 100 million years ago when dinosaurs roamed in the late Cretaceous, North Africa was approaching Europe from the south. The marine area between Europe and North Africa was an open seaway called the Tethy Sea and it allowed for free exchange of waters between the Atlantic and the Indian Oceans. Throughout the early Cenozoic era as the two continents converged 
Both land masses became emergent. They tectonically rose and shallow coastal seas drained away. As mountains rose to the north and the east, the marine connections of what would become the Mediterranean Basin became more restricted in west and east, and eventually the connection to the Indian Ocean became tenuous and then disappeared entirely. About six million years ago, the rise of coastal ranges in southern Spain and North Africa, at least temporarily, cut off the connection of the Mediterranean to the Atlantic Ocean. However, the story is a bit complicated because the enormous volume of evaporites in the Mediterranean Basin is much too great to be explained merely by the desiccation of the Mediterranean Sea. Apparently, for the next 600,000 years, the connection to the Atlantic was periodically reestablished. So did the Mediterranean completely dry up? That's difficult to say. Uh, the formation of evaporites is not contingent upon the complete desiccation of a water body. Perhaps the best models for the Mediterranean during the salinity crisis are the Great Brine Lakes of the Atacama region of South America or the Brine Lakes of East Africa, filled with brine shrimp, much to the delight of millions of flamingos. By about five million years ago, the connection between the Atlantic and Mediterranean at Gibraltar became permanently reestablished. The spectacular coastal canyons formed by rivers flowing into the Mediterranean basin became embayments, and gradually these were buried beneath silt and sand. Perhaps the only remaining question is what event took place that permanently reestablished the connection between the Atlantic and the Mediterranean? The three prime candidates are sea level rise, tectonic activity, and headwater or retrograde erosion. And perhaps I should point out that there's nothing that precludes the event being the result of all three in combination. As regards tectonism, there has been a suggestion that the formation of a new fault system led to the reestablishment of the connection. However, there is no unambiguous physical evidence to support that idea. There's also little geologic evidence to support the idea that at the end of the Miocene, a rise in sea level caused a reconnection of the Atlantic and Mediterranean, although periodic sea level rise and fall may have something to do with periodic reestablishment of the connection over a period of several million years in the late Miocene. Here I'd like to go back briefly to something we discussed earlier, the deeply entrenched channels off the coast of many countries surrounding the Mediterranean. To understand how those deeply incised channels formed, let's go thousands of miles away and look at erosion in the Grand Canyon. Stream channels become established mostly through stormwater runoff flowing downslope. As stream channels cut downward eroding through rock layers, they are also extended upslope through the process of retrograde erosion. Retrograde erosion can eventually obliterate a ridgeline. And perhaps that's what happened at Gibraltar. Once the ridge line was breached, the waters of the Atlantic flowed freely again into the Mediterranean, and over about a thousand years, the entire basin was refilled. So that, in brief, is a geologic history of the Mediterranean Sea and the Mycenaean salinity crisis. Over the next few weeks, I have a number of topics in mind, including more on volcanism and supervolcanoes, uh, something about the formation of petroleum, and also the formation of coal. If there are other subjects that you'd be interested in hearing about, please let me know. Bis später.